Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Encounter with God Together, our weekly video and audio podcast where we review the highlights of the week ahead in our daily Bible reading guide. Um, I am pleased to have with us today a longtime pastor, four decades, uh, pastor and teacher, that's his calling, David Rennick. Uh, David is originally from Scotland and he spent the last 11 years at the National Presbyterian Church in Washington, D.C. And uh, David, it's wonderful to have you uh, with us. You're recently retired, but I'm keeping you busy and I know others are as well. <laughs> Uh, they, they are indeed, um, but uh, very much enjoying this new stage uh, in my life. I'm glad to be able to uh, participate in, in uh, Encounter with God together. Um, yes, thank you. And I know you and your wife are readers, and you have a story about uh, the notes in your, your seminary. Mm -hmm. so, so I became a, a, a Christian, made a commitment to Christ at a scripture union camp in Scotland. Uh, in the 1960s, and uh, from uh, that moment began reading my Bible every day, and with the wow. help of graded notes uh, from Scripture Union in the UK, and uh, and that really obviously was part of the way God uh, transformed my life, but when I went to seminary, uh, I tested out of the basic Bible courses uh, because I knew uh, the scripture. We were able to do a test, and uh, I said, well, where did I learn this? I don't know. Well, the answer was a small passage every day transforms what we know in our head and hopefully transforms as well what we know in our, our hearts. Um, oh, that is wonderful. And that is, you know, our, our, our desire uh, for this community, this reading community, and for others who will begin uh, in the new year, hopefully, to read God's word every day. So thank you yes. for that. Well, David, you have um, Colossians today. We're continuing on in the book of Colossians. And I want to pray for you as you uh, unpack things for us this week. Thank you. Okay, Father, I do pray for David. I thank you for his um, his many years of, of living in your word daily, of soaking it in and, um, and proclaiming it. Uh, for these many decades, and I thank you for his gift in this in this way, and I pray that you will use him this morning to encourage us for the week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Gail, thank you for the invitation, and uh, wonderful to be able to uh, speak a little bit about really one of my favorite books in all of scripture, and these particular chapters, uh, just so close to my heart, uh, powerful words about who Jesus is mm -hmm. and what he has done for us and powerful challenges for us to respond to who Jesus is and what he has done for us. And I think those two things are what we have to keep in mind all the way through Colossians, that the Apostle Paul, uh, writing to this church in uh, what is now modern day Turkey, probably within 25 years or so after Jesus' life, death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. So the older I get, the shorter that period of time seems to, to be. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's true, uh, for sure. Yep, yeah, he's remembering um, uh, the impact of the risen Jesus on his life when he was confronted by Jesus on the Damascus Road. But, but also we know he's been in touch with the disciples who knew Jesus. And uh, so he wants to proclaim who Jesus is and what he has done. But he certainly calls the churches, and this is important too, it's not just individuals, uh, but the churches to respond to that. In fact, uh, in Colossians, as in any of the other letters in our English translations, we often uh, read the word you, Y-O-U, as singular. Mm. But most of the time it's plural. So Paul is speaking to communities, uh, wanting them to be transformed as well as the individuals within them. Mm. And those two things uh, go side by side, both personal transformation and community transformation. Maybe we'll see a little bit of that as we go through like the that. passages. I like that insight. Thank you. So um, so what I'd like to do is actually take us day by day through the passages and pick out my favorite verses. Ah, there you go. <laughs> and, <laughs> I like that. Uh, and uh, we'll, see, we'll see how we go because there, there are just a, a, a lot of them uh, here. Uh, if we've got time at the end, I'll try to go back and summarize, but uh, let's just see how it goes day by day. So day one is uh, today, it's Monday, 
And uh, in Colossians 2, chapter 6 through 15, uh, the first verses are really so critical, as the notes uh, indicate. Uh, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Actually, to walk in him is more literal. And I, I like that old King James version, to walk with Christ, side by side with Christ, like the disciples on the, the road to Emmaus, uh, so that he could open our eyes to him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in, in thanksgiving. So right, right away, uh, here are some admonitions. These are our responses to who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Continue to live your life in him, rooted. This is a an agricultural image. Uh, just imagine that uh, Jesus is the soil and we are planted inside him. Mm. And uh, his, his uh, nutrients fill our lives so that we can grow. And built up in him moves to a construction image. And often in the Bible, this is the image of the temple where Jesus is the cornerstone and we are the living stones uh, who are being built up. And, and God is in the middle of this, this building and established in the faith as you were taught. Um, and then abounding in thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is so important, not only just because we've come out of the Thanksgiving season, but, but it's a reflection of the fact that um, at the heart of our faith is good news. It's not what we do for God first, though that's critical. Yes. It's what God has done for us, uh, for which we're grateful. So gratitude actually fills our passage of, of scripture. Uh, and why this response? Uh, why this gratitude? Well, then uh, verses 9 and 10. For in him, in Christ, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have come to fullness in him. Everything we need uh, as those created by God, we receive through our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, because in him, uh, the fullness of God dwells bodily. Uh, so going back to last week, uh, one of my all-time favorite verses is Colossians 1.15. He is the image of the invisible God. I love that so too. Colossians is really one of the great uh, books in terms of the divinity of Christ and mm. laying that out before us. And in fact, in many ways, parallels a passage which many people will hear at Christmas from John chapter 1, uh, what we call the prologue to John's gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Colossians reflects this same understanding of who Jesus is, a great teacher, great person, but above all, the incarnation of, of God in, in uh, human flesh. Mm. So, so this is who he is, and uh, we've been called to, to respond. So that's day one. Uh, day two, uh, chapter two, verses 16, 18, and 19, are, I'm going to pick out. Um, it's not a given that we're going to respond. So mm. God has done great things. And of course we should, wow, we should respond. But um, uh, there are problems. And sometimes the problems, unfortunately, are actually within the church. Sometimes they're outside the church from unbelievers. But sometimes we can find that believers do not help us uh, uh, along the way. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and they can criticize or they can look down or they can, uh, they can urge us on, but in the wrong way by laying a guilt trip on us. And Paul is uh, really clear uh, on this. So in 16, he says, do not let anyone condemn you. And in verse 18, do not let anyone disqualify you um, by saying, well, you ought to do this. You ought to do that. And I often think that the Colossians probably had some people who believed in what I call the quick fix. If you only do this, your Christian life will be perfect. If you only have this experience, if you only follow these Christian disciplines, you'll be perfect. Now, I think there are experiences that God uses. There are disciplines that we need. Um, but Paul is very clear in our Tuesday passage that they are not number one. There's only one thing that's number one, and that's holding on to Jesus. Uh, who is the number one? So connecting to Jesus uh, is critical. So in verse 19, hold fast to the head. Yeah. And that is to Jesus, from whom the whole body, this is Paul's interest in the community, is nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews. That's all uh, our lives mixed up together and grows with the growth that is from God. Um, so we are called to do our part 
But God gives the growth. Paul says that to the Corinthians as well. Mm -hmm. And that growth comes by being connected to the source of life, and that's to Jesus. So Jesus is number one, we connect to Jesus and his life flows through us, but it's not automatic. There are going to be people who push and pull us in different directions. And I, I think this uh, passage, and maybe Paul has this in mind, is Jesus uh, is linked to Jesus teaching in the parable of the sower, where he reminds us that, uh, you know, there's good soil. Yeah, but there's also uh, uh, rocky soil and shallow soil and the hard part. And all kinds of distractions uh, that we need to be aware of. Paul is realistic mm. about this and shares his own struggles in Colossians uh, here. So uh, day two, um, don't take this for granted, these changes. Remember, they're both people and there are ideas out there which uh, are not going to be helpful. Some of them are wrong. Mm. Some of them are not just the right thing for us at this particular time. So we. We need to uh, be perceptive and prayerful about those things. Uh, moving on, day, day three, Wednesday, uh, Colossians 3, 1 through 4. This is a short section, and it's hard to pick out any uh, 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 parts of this which are better than the rest. <laughs> but, uh, but Christ's work um, comes into play at the beginning. If you have been raised with Christ or I think a better translation is since you have been raised with Christ. The word if in Greek and the word since are the same, the same word. Since yeah, God has done something for you, has given you his life because you're connected to the head, um, seek the things that are above. Set your minds on things that are above. So Christ does something for us. And here are some great verbs uh, that we're to follow. We're to seek. Remember Jesus, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and set our minds uh how critical this is in a mm. world of distractions yes and uh, we know that um uh, social media is determined to set our minds on whatever <laughs> the next thing is we can flip to on our <laughs> smartphones and we get hooked on that and uh, uh paul tells us no 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 uh, there's one thing one person uh, on whom you need to set your your mind and that's uh, christ christ is seated at the right hand of god he says and uh, and he is the one who is once again preeminent so the preeminence of jesus goes through the whole of our passage and then this responsibility that uh, that we have to to follow mm. uh, spells out a little bit of what christ has done for us here he says and some of this is complicated in, in Colossians. Uh, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in, in glory. Uh, you have died. Uh, it's a wonderful statement about, really about Jesus taking care of the judgment that comes upon us because of our sin. That's our past. Um, you've passed through that, uh, he says. He says, our life is hidden with Christ in God. That's our present. Think of ourselves, uh, we thought of ourselves as the seed within the soil of Christ. Now think of ourselves as uh, being planted in, in, uh, within Christ's arms. Mm. Uh, our life is hidden inside his arms like a child in the embrace of a parent. And we're safe uh, there. And then our future, when Christ who is in your life is revealed, you also will be revealed with him in glory. Uh, he'll hold on to you to the to the end. So this is what Christ does. I'm going to keep on saying this. This is how how we respond. Uh, oh and uh, then Thursday, uh, we're into Colossians three verses five through eleven on Thursday, and uh, the response now is uh, pretty graphic and very specific. Um, in verse five, put to death. <laughs> therefore what is in you is earth but don't play with it don't rationalize with it uh, put it to death and then the the opposite is uh, the imagery of clothing keep on and the notes are great on on this keep on clothing yourself it's not once but clothing yourself with the new self with jesus put him on every morning mm. uh, i admit i forget to do this but really what we should do every day we get dressed is say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the clothes I wear, but thank you for clothing me. Help me 
to be clothed with you today. Mm. Uh, this is a passage I actually uh, read often at weddings and remind a couple that everybody got dressed up today. It's a special day. Well, every day is a special day uh, with Christ and we need to put on his clothing every day. So uh, that's our responsibility. But Jesus has given us the clothes. He has given us uh, himself. That's great. Um, and then uh, uh, on to uh, day five, uh, Friday. The week is rapidly going. And, <laughs> yeah, it does, uh, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And, um, we're truly at some of my favorite verses. Uh, Colossians 3, 12 through 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. And uh, being chosen is uh, uh, often causes people problems in, uh, uh, in theology in terms of, whoa, uh, has God chosen me or not you? Well. Actually, I think of it more in terms of uh, uh, a sergeant major standing in front of army troops and say, I choose you, 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 and you. And everybody goes, oh, thank goodness I haven't been chosen because they know that it's going to be a hard task that lies ahead. Mm. Uh, you have been chosen. Therefore, you must respond. It's not just about privilege. It is, though. I mean, we've mm. been chosen to be in his family. But... Whenever you've been chosen by God, remember all the people in Scripture who've been chosen. They got work to do for Jesus, <laughs> and uh, and our work lies uh, ahead of us. And He comes back to this image of uh, clothing, but He spells out the characteristics and the virtues of the the Christian life. This is who Jesus is, really. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. Bear with one another, forgive each other, clothe yourselves with love. Um, all of these virtues are now spelled out. Often we think of uh, the virtues as uh, the transformation of my character. And that, that's true. But actually, these are the gifts we need in order to live together in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so the gifts are not just to make me a better person or even to make me more Christ-like, though that's true because we're being remade, Paul says, in the image of God. Uh, but it is to equip us to live inside the body of Christ in a way that is helpful and not harmful. Um, and so uh, when you look at these virtues, uh, think of them as, what is the virtue I need to love my neighbor, to love my Christian neighbor within the church uh, and my Christian neighbor within my family uh, here? Uh, as well as what do I need to be more Christ-like uh, here? Uh, in that same passage, he comes uh, down uh, at verse 15 to say, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Uh, this is a, such a wonderful verse because I think it has two meanings. Mm -hmm. We usually read it in terms of uh, the, the peace that I feel, that the peace that... Christ wants to give in our hearts, uh, be real to us. And, and I think that's absolutely right. Uh, Jesus speaks about this to his disciples in John's gospel when he's about to leave them. Uh, Peace I give to you, um, uh, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Mm. And I believe that Paul here actually thinks of the peace of Christ as, um, as the, the cross of Christ. Uh, be, by which he made peace. He made peace uh, ah. says, by the blood of his cross. So let the cross of Christ dwell in your, or rule in your hearts so that uh, you're always thinking of um, Jesus uh, not only gave his life for me, but there was a humility in the Godhead and the divine Godhead. And we see this, of course, at Christmas, which comes down to us and meets us where we are. Uh, not in the palace, but in the stable, mm. and, and then in death. And this is what Jesus was willing to do to make peace. What are we willing to do? Uh, so let uh, what he was willing to do to make peace rule and govern your life. Mm. Um, and then be thankful, he says. Well, of course, this is what he did for us. And then words which, of course, appeal to every SU uh, uh, leader, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, uh, which is what our Scripture Union's business is about, is helping people to let the word of 
Christ dwell in us uh, richly, uh, learning from the notes, learning from the daily readings, teach and admonish one another. Um, not sure there's much singing there, but Paul goes on to speak about singing. And uh, singing and gratitude are very closely related. When we're grateful, there's a, then there's a song in our heart. Yes. Uh, once again, who Jesus is, what he's done. Um, what's the, my response? Is there a gratitude which leads to transformation? Mm. Um, and and transformation even when there are obstacles in the in the way. We're getting down to Saturday. <laughs> Saturday uh, has a a list of people in it: wives, husbands, children, fathers, slaves, masters. And uh, often has been a controversial uh, passage because Paul does not denounce slavery. Uh, but uh, actually, it really is a, a radical passage, and it's tied in uh, verses 18, 19, 20 to uh, chapter 4, verse 1, actually, tied in with uh, uh, chapter 3 and verse 11. Uh, Paul speaks in chapter 3, so I'm, I'm going back uh, to Thursday here. Uh, about in the renewal that comes from Christ, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian. That's a wild tribe which uh, invaded from the east and came on the north shore of the, the Black Sea. Um, but it's about the wildest group Paul could think of, I think. <laughs> and uh, Slave and free, but Christ is all in all. Uh, this is a, another passage which has categories of people, Greek, Jews, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, and then wives, husbands, children, fathers, slaves, and masters. These are all labels which are part and parcel of life. And what Paul is saying is that every label must be subsumed under the label of uh, belonging to Jesus, belonging to Christ. Uh, that's the most important label that we can have. When it comes to the list of wives and husbands, children and fathers, slaves and masters, the radical part of this mm. is in who Paul addresses first. And in fact, who he speaks to at all. There's a, a, a late New Testament scholar uh, at Edinburgh University, Larry Hurtado, who puts it this way. He says that in ancient writing, there is no evidence of any great writer writing directly to any slave you write to a slave through the master hmm. a paul directly speaks here to wives to children and to slaves and guess what he speaks to each of those groups before he speaks to the men to to the husband so it's the wives first and husbands next <coughs> it's the children first and fathers next huh. It's the slaves first and masters. Wow. Now. And, and in, a, in the community, that would be revolutionary. What do you mean <laughs> talking to the women first or to the children? They are nothing. Or to the slaves. Um, so this addressing first is revolutionary. That he's is saying, great. Yeah. I, yeah I he's not in the Roman world, but he's planting the seeds which are transformative. And indeed, the last word, uh, is to masters. Remember, uh, and the notes are wonderful, uh, you've got a master too. In fact, all of us are slaves under the gracious leadership of our Lord, Lord Jesus here. So uh, Paul wants our lives to be transformed, our character uh, wants our, uh, our lives to be transformed, the way we categorize people transformed. Um, and all of this comes as we Keep in mind who Jesus is and, and what he has done for us. Um, uh, knowing that it's a struggle, but with God's help, we can, we can make it through. So I hope that's a, a way to lead us through uh, a great passage of scripture. Yeah, that was a whirlwind tour of a lot of things that I'm sure as a pastor and teacher that you could have expounded on for, for weeks and weeks. But I think you hit some really important things there and some challenging things for us. And uh, I know that I'm going to look at these um, with those eyes this week that you've highlighted. Um, and I'm really thankful for, for your sharing your gift with us. My pleasure. Yeah. yeah. David, would you, um, would you close in prayer and pray for our community and those who are watching 
that um, that we indeed would be able to <clears throat> to take to heart some of the the uh, the thoughts that you've shared today. Yes, indeed. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we bow before you uh, in this season of Advent and ask that you'd help us to truly be worshipers of um, the one who came to us as a baby, um, God in human flesh. Help us to be amazed with this good news always, and then to be amazed that this same Jesus should live and die and rise again for us. Uh, fill us with a sense of good news at this time of the year and deeply grateful hearts. And let that uh, gratitude and the, the peace that you bring to us through our Lord Jesus be transformative in our lives. Forbid it that we should stay the same people we were yesterday or the day before or years ago. But help us to change and help us to be agents of change within our churches mm. so that what we know in our heads will lead to to changes in our lives and in uh, the community which you've called to, to bear your name. Hear this, our prayer. Be with us this day, uh, if this is a day which we look forward to, or if this is a day we have anxiety about. Uh, be present with us in great power. Hmm. In Christ's name. Amen. 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 Well, this is the first we've had you on this uh, episode. I hope it won't be the last. Um, I can see why uh, why this is your calling, and um, and even though you're retired, we'll we'll keep the calling active. Oh, thank you. So, here we go. Thank you. You too, David. You have a wonderful week. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye bye.